Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of At Work in Pain. I am Chris Short. I am joined by the one and only Julia Fierioli. And uh, Julia, how are you today? I am really thankful for the end of this week. As um, am I. I definitely, like my pain level this week has definitely gone up and down based mm-hmm. on stress. Mm-hmm. Um, just like that state of hyper vigilance yep. totally messes with you, right? Yeah, same. Uh, I am just physically and mentally exhausted after the week that has been this week. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, for context, since uh, I think we're posting this next week, this right. was the week of the inauguration. Yeah. So um, that's kind of our, our context and, and state of mind. Yeah, I posted on Twitter a little sticky note that I just kind of hand drew real quick, like my anxiety level, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at noon. (laughs) So, yeah, uh, that's kind of where it's been. Do you ever get that experience of like when you're under extreme amounts of stress? You once the stress is alleviated, you'll get sick. I don't get sick. I just get very exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I'm sure if I were more immunocompromised, I would probably get sick for sure. Yeah, yeah. So what's our topic for today? I think we're talking about, at least to start, stigmas. And uh, that's where we can start. Um, we've also f- thrown out the idea of like talking about the first time we were we called ourselves disabled. Um, as well as how that label changed, you know, how we feel about ourselves, how we you know, think about ourselves, and then um, what tools it gave us at work, if any. Um, and that's always an interesting one, given, you know, where you work and where I work. Mm-hmm. We're both uh, working at large tech companies. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I will say... And this is totally my um, internalized ableism coming through. Mm. I always thought about disability as it applied to others. Right. Um, it was a very, very hard leap for me thinking about how disability really applies to a much more broader set than is is traditionally thought about yes yeah and the stick like zeroing in on the the chronic pain side of things Mm. chronic pain is hugely stigmatized in our society um which is and probably worse than others but yes yeah (laughs) yeah um and it's it's just it makes it hard to talk about both, you know, person to person amongst friends, amongst family, definitely amongst healthcare. Mm -hmm. And um, just at work, it's kind of tricky. Yeah. It's very tricky. Um, Especially now, right? Like you have to be very connected um, and that's, you know, very easy to do if you have a smartphone and a laptop and a tablet and all this other stuff. But if you have to sit down and, you know, do something, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, will the pain distract you from what you're doing? Mm-hmm. And that's what I've experienced today is that a lot of distraction just from like, okay, what's the next thing I can try to manage pain? Um, and then just alert notifications kind of like somehow interrupt you more easily when you're in pain and all these other things, like your, your normal defenses are lowered for lack of a better term. Right. Yeah. It, it helps me to think about my brain. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I know I, I, I have probably less understanding about like the different parts of my brain than I should have. Yeah. But when I think about my brain and I think about, the capacity that it has when I am in pain, like 
there's a, a lot of my brain that's just dedicated to managing the pain, to thinking about it, to making sure that I am five or six things you do are the right five or six things to do. Yeah. Well, like I've talked about this before, but also just masking. So as not make people uncomfortable. The amount of mental and, you know, emotional effort it takes to make yourself look like you're a functional human being is immeasurable. Um, I cannot tell you how many times today I've been like, oh, I just made a mistake in math. I'm tired and hurting. That's why, right? Like I can tell that parts of my brain are like, you know, think of it as an engine, like misfiring for lack of a better term, right? Like some neurons are being interrupted by this other steady stream of signal coming from, you know, this part of my body. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so it's interesting. And I, I only recently thought about this yeah. or realized that I was doing this. Mm. But one of the things that pain interrupts for, interrupts for me the most is my speech. Really? And, okay. and saying what I want to say, it'll often like kind of give me a, a, a sense of aphasia. And the way that I mask it in meetings is, oh, I must not have had enough caffeine today. Um, yeah, I've used that excuse before, yeah. um, especially when I have to take a lot of painkillers, right? Like if mm-hmm. I have to take a lot of medication to actually function that day, oh my gosh. Um, it was a couple... I think a few weeks ago, it was this year. Uh, it was like a Tuesday, like probably like the first Tuesday of the year or something. And I was like, my brain was just swimming and mm-hmm. like pain meds. And like, I was just wonky, but still do my day job, you know, right. Like still gotta like, you know, play the role. And like, I don't, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Are we hurting ourselves more by doing that? I think it goes back to the definition of disability. Right. Like in the, I'm paraphrasing the World Health Organization's Mm -hmm. definition of disability, but like there's a gap between your, the capabilities of your body and what society expects from, from you. Mm -hmm. And it seems like totally within the realm of, disability of that definition of disability to be in this situation where your focus, your capabilities vary depending on how, on the management of your health. Right. Right. It no longer becomes, okay, I uh, I can knock out this. I can knock out that. I can knock out this. It's like, I have to plan Mm -hmm. Times to take a medicine, times to take breaks, times to, you know, do whatever physical therapy things I can do that day, right? Like all the, all the stuff to manage this carbon shell that my brain sits in (laughs) is uh, exhausting the capacity of the brain that sits within the carbon shell, right? Like it's, it's, it's very much like I have so many apparatuses hidden here in my office now uh, just to like do physical therapy right here as opposed to going Mm -hmm. someplace else and doing it Um, because like 10 minutes on some neck traction, five minutes on a four inch foam roller, you know, Mm -hmm. a few hours wearing a, you might've seen these on athletes, but this actually helps like my shoulder not be in pain as much. It's a sleeve, a compression sleeve for my arm. And like, I've seen athletes wear these to like protect them from like falling on, you know, basketball courts or football fields or whatever. But like this adds like a second layer of like muscle and skin to my arm that really does do a very good job of like, just kind of keeping it, you know, in a place where it doesn't hurt as bad. And there's some, you know, elasticity to it that keeps it in a position where it doesn't hurt to move it. 
So I feel as though there's a bit of an elephant in the room, which you touched on, Mm -hmm. which is medication. Oh, yeah. Um, Have you... (laughs) Have you ever been told by people, um, your medication bag? Yeah, my medication's uh, good. Yeah. Have you ever been told by by folks stories of like inspiration of people who you know experience an accident and are in chronic pain, but they just power through it mm. and they live a normal life? That's a fantasy. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say it's a fantasy, but it is not the norm. Um, but those are the pe- those are the stories that people like to tell, right. thinking that they're helpful. Right. Like, oh, yeah, I totally broke my ankle five years ago and I just haven't done anything about it. You know, so stories like that, not necessarily broken ankle, but, yeah, right. you know, similar stories like that. And like, no, that's not helpful at all. You telling me how you had an acute injury does not help me with my chronic injury. Right. Right. Like acute pain is very different than chronic. Mm-hmm. Pain. Like there's Tylenol in this bag for acute pain, not chronic <laughs> pain. Right. Yeah. Like it's for the headache. It's for the, the additional pain that's caused by all the other stuff having to compensate for you know, nerve damage and muscles that just don't respond anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And people, especially right now with the, the opioid epidemic. Oh, God. The opioid epidemic mistake, <laughs> which you know is is shown to measurably like the restrictions that yeah the have, response have, to the epidemic is the mistake right, and it's been shown to measurably harm folks with chronic pain mm-hmm. um, because one the of the hoops things- I have to jump through is just oh yeah it's unbelievable absolutely, absolutely. and. What people don't seem to realize is that like, medica- pain medication doesn't make us feel good. No, it's not like I'm out here getting high for fun, right? right. Like it, it just, it keeps me functional, right? It brings you to baseline. Right, like it takes the edge off, right? Like if we're talking about, think of it as like a saw blade, right? And this long saw blade has all these very sharp teeth on it. It actually just kind of smooths some of those teeth out just a little, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, It's so that we can like kind of live a normal-ish life. Try to. Try to, yeah, do our best. The funny thing about pain medication, though, is that the fact that you need to take breaks from it sometimes so that it's still effective, which means you have to deal with extreme pain Yes. to make sure that your pain medication still works without you having to up the dosage and up the dosage and up the dosage, right? Mm. Right. You know, that's I I took that train once uh, when I was in the VA system. Uh, Mm -hmm. When I first started, they were like, okay, here's Narco. Okay, here's something a little stronger. Okay, here's something a little stronger. Okay, here's morphine. And I was on morphine for like a long time to the point where I had to go to the ER one night because parts of my body just stopped working. And that's, that's morphine. Like, that's what it does over time. And I was in my 20s, (laughs) for God's sakes, right? Like, in early 30s when this was happening. And it just got to the point where it's like, I never want to be on that strong of a pain medication ever again. But I know there'll probably be a day when I have to go back to it. Because there's only so long that I can fight this, right? Mm -hmm. Like mentally and physically. You know, just, you know, my pain on the one to 10 scale, which is just a horrible scale in general. Um, You know, if I had to rate it right now, I'd say it's a seven. But here I am, you know, Mm -hmm. working away today. You know, it's Friday, doing some reports, uh, did a live stream, produced one. You know, it's like just plugging away, plugging away, you know, getting the work done. But the... This, like, if I were to mention I'm in horrible pain today, mm-hmm. 
I'm not sure how productive I'm going to be. If I said that every time I was in horrible pain, I, I, they would probably just go replace me, right? Like, <laughs> what would you want if you said that at work? That's a good question, right? Like, I would. I would want more effective communication, right? Like, don't let me go to a meeting if I don't need to be there, which we're pretty good at here, you know, mm -hmm. where I work. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like your cognitive capabilities, like, like Chris doesn't seem like himself today yeah. or, you know, he seems distracted or, you know, yeah, I'm distracted by my own pain. It happens. Um, it's a very natural and regular thing. Um, from people that are injured and suffer with chronic pain it's mm -hmm. it's yeah sometimes you're not yourself um i see that you know often in friends and family well you you did this five years ago why can't you do it now i was like well things have changed right mm -hmm. like uh we've noticed that you know we we did a whole bunch of work on my neck over the past quarter or so right well that that work has come to an end mm -hmm. there's there's still a high amount of pain in my neck and radiating down my arm so now what yeah well I, don't, I can't pick up like the 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 younglings in my family right like that's just off limits now right so yeah um you know my my large family is my bubble so you know when not being able to pick up the youngest one, which at one point in time was literally just a milk jug, you know, <laughs> right. In size and weight. Um, it's weird, right? Like you have to build a relationship with the baby as an uncle and, you know, holding the baby is one thing, right? Like I can hold a baby in my left arm just fine. Um, but you can't hold like a squirmy toddler kid uh, very well sometimes. Right. And, and like, uh, during the holidays, one of the saddest things uh, was we were doing, uh, I think it was after the, the evening after Christmas, and uh, one of my nephews got Twister. And super cool game, right? Like, lots of fun for kids. And, yeah. like, one of my sister-in-laws was playing, two of the kids were playing, and then I walk in the room, they're like, Uncle Chris, come play with us. And I'm like, I'm really sorry, guys, I can't play that game mm -hmm. and like they don't they don't understand why you can't play that game right they just mm -hmm. why doesn't uncle chris want to play with us yeah like that's that's not it and you know explaining that you know uncle chris is hurt it, it's like it doesn't connect well uncle chris you know chases after us sometimes and da, 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 you know well that's when he feels fine you know that or feels better ish you know <laughs> um yeah. You know, it's like I try to do what I can, but often, you know, like going to a family event for three hours is like that is going to wipe me out for the rest of the day and potentially the next day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty lucky in that I'm kind of transparent with my team about when shit's getting real. Mm -hmm. Well, when your shit gets real, it's way realer than my shit, right? Like, to be there's fair. there's no this is not the pain Olympics. Well, no, 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 I'm not saying that, but like you have much worse symptoms than I do sometimes, right? Like, uh, okay, I, I mean, like occasionally, I think they're a little bit more varied. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say, like, the worst thing that somebody could say to me is, oh, I hope you feel better. Which is funny because that's what everybody says, right? right. Like, I will say, like, hey, I'm writing my newsletter, having a hard time tonight with pain. I'm going to finish it in the morning. On, I'll post that on Twitter. And they're like, oh, hope you feel better. Yeah. It's like, I'm never going to feel better. Right. <laughs> like I'm never, ever, ever going to feel better. This is the constant state. And 
I think like what I would actually want from my colleagues is something on the order of, hey, what can I do? Or like um, just maybe the meta of, of just a little bit more leeway, a little bit more clear communication, mm-hmm. um, understanding of I'm going to stumble in my meetings on occasion when it like breaks through. Um, oh, yeah. And, and just, you know, more empathy. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not like, you know, you need to fix this because it's not fixable. No, you can't fix this. Right. Right. That's the first thing I have to tell people is this isn't fixable. This is only treatable. Yeah. And while I really understand the motivation behind the message of, oh, I hope you feel better, you know, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like what goes on in the back end of my brain is like, I literally cannot take care of myself because nothing I'm going to do is going to make it better. And Mm. I actually resent this, this implication that this is a transient state for me. Um, And so like, I kind of wish that more people appreciated the difference between acute and chronic pain. Like, they're two but, different animals. Right. Like acute pain is when I sprained my ankle and then had to go to physical therapy for it. Right. Like now it feels okay. And it pops every once in a while, whatever. Right. Like it was a pretty bad sprain. Um, like to the point they were doing x-rays. Like, so mm-hmm. obviously pretty bad, but that yeah. was like, you know, doing physical therapy for that. Now I feel fine. Mm-hmm. When I do physical therapy now, it's to maintain state right like it's to maintain the chronic pain state as it is it's to not make it worse right and uh at times the physical therapy can make it worse which i think is crazy (laughs) right like this is supposed to help you right like you're going to get stronger it's like well wait a minute i don't necessarily want to be like herculean i just want to be a normal human Right. <laughs> so I know that, that we have to wrap up. Um, if there are, if there was one thing that would be beneficial to, to removing stigma, what would it be? Uh. It's hard to have a lot of one-on-one conversations about it, mm-hmm. but like I've written blog posts about it. Just yeah. go to, go read that. Yeah. Right. Like if you read that and you ingest the information and you, there, you see like empirical data, um, you know, like if I've gotten to the point where I've written a blog post about it, like that's how much I've talked about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if you say it three times, you're supposed to write a blog post about it. You know, if you're <laughs> right. following or like that kind of rule. Right. So like I've literally written blog posts. I have a page on my website to describe all the things and what happened to me and everything else. Cause I don't necessarily want to bring it up. I don't necessarily want to talk about it. Right. Yeah. I just kind of want like, you know, it's like, I want you to do nothing. Right? <laughs> I want you to literally just say, okay, it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, or sorry. Or, you know, just something that simple, you know, yeah. is what I would want. I, I would say is, like, don't try to fix us. Right. Chronic uh, is the word. Yeah. The and definition of the very word has to be paid attention to. R- right. And there's a certain amount of like, hey, maybe you should... If, if you have questions, maybe you should educate yourself by going to read Chris's blog posts. Right. Or going just searching for chronic pain and right. effect on, you know, a, you know, mood or effect on capabilities or anything. There's tons of research out there now. Yes. But don't yeah. come to me with your research that you've read either. Right. Like, I don't need suggestions. I have a team of people that I work right. with, <laughs> you know. They yeah. have all the knowledge of what's wrong with me. And I work with them. 
because they're experts and they know me. I don't want your random advice. Yes. So go like go read Chris's blog posts. I've mm-hmm. given talks on the issue. Go listen to them. Um, and kind of like the time that we're we're being vulnerable and expressing pain is not the time to place extra demands for education upon us. Exactly. Right. Like I don't want to have to explain why I'm leaving a room. Right. Yes. Like I don't want to have to explain why I'm logging off. Right. Like if I tell you, holy crap, I feel like I got hit by a train. Like don't make me, ex- you know, please don't make me sit there and explain what's wrong. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it feels like I got hit by a train. Isn't that enough? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, um, thanks everyone for joining us at this episode of at work in pain, focusing on stigma um, around chronic pain, disability, and and work. Uh, if you have topics that you would like us to cover in the future, please let us know in the comments, um, mm-hmm. and we will put them on the list. Uh, yes. And yes. And any any question in the comments is fine. Yep. Again, don't try to fix us. Uh, but you know, they should be trying to educate yourself, please. Yeah. Um, and feedback. Welcome. We're still kind of refining this and, uh, seeing, seeing what the best practices are for what we're talking about here today and in the future. So, uh, the the habit is, or the tradition is like, and subscribe. Yeah. So feel free to do that. Clicky, 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 everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it.